some kind of whatever air or water, what have you. The, um, uh, obviously, the, uh, there are five things which characterize it. There is the question of uh, pressure. Uh, there is the question of density. There is the question of the three components of the velocity. And there is the pressure, um, uh, which is uh, uh, part of part and parcel of um, uh, fluid. So uh, there are. Uh, f uh, this is one equation, one conservation law. Um, uh, for, for the uh, uh, dense mass, here is a conservation law uh, for the momentum density, uh, except that it is not a, a conser complete conservation law. Uh, it is this is the, what this will tell you that there is a um, acceleration and um, uh, there is the it's driven by the uh, pressure gradient over here. If you want some. Uh, body force, uh, that would be some F of I, some external body force. So that's there. So uh, four equations over here. And you need a fifth. There are five var uh, 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 variables, and one wants a fifth. And therefore, we had the <coughs> conservation of entropy. So entropy per unit mass, that makes this S rho the per volume quantity. And that is the divergence. So del del xi rho s v i, that's equal to 0. So that's the adiabatic situation, which essentially is telling you that there is a link between pressure. There is an equation of state. Uh, which relates the uh, pressure to the density. So that comes indirectly uh, through the conservation of uh, entropy. And uh, so the adiabatic condition leads you to an equation of state. So essentially, this is good for providing a link between pressure and density. And then these two systems close on uh, each other. So the point is that this is what one calls an ideal fluid. So that's more or less the bottom line uh, here. Um, so this is what is called an ideal fluid. It's an ideal fluid because there is no um, uh, dissipation over here. Uh, there are no, there is no friction in this uh, momentum business. The external force um, uh, over here uh, is that external force. You can always take it to be conservative, and uh, well, anyway, that's not the uh, issue of friction. Friction is that fluid when moving uh, has an internal mechanism which would tend to um, uh, do something or other, and uh, the um, uh, uh, there is no thermal conductivity either, which is what this adiabaticity is all about. If heat could flow from one part of the fluid to another, then this um, uh, uh, local relation uh, would no longer be valid. So I, it's an ideal fluid with no viscosity and no thermal conductivity. <clears throat> so that's the um, uh, condition on ve in, in, in which we um, uh, uh, had these uh, 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 equations of motion. And then we were playing around with this, playing around um, uh, to make it sort of uh, uh, put it in a form where uh, it appears somewhat more uh, usable. So the particular um, uh, quantity to uh, focus on is this, which actually tells you the most important thing that one um, uh, deals with in a fluid, that what does the velocity uh, look like? What is its distribution in space and time? So one is particularly interested in this and writes this using making use of the mass conservation law over here, that one gets this as del vi del t plus Vj del J on Vi is minus del I P over rho plus this uh, <coughs> Fi divided by rho, call it Fi divided by rho, call it some F of 5. <coughs> so um, 
uh, that's uh, the um, um, uh, situation with um, uh, the um, uh, velocity equation. So, out of this momentum business, so this is the rate of change of momentum and rate of change of momentum, you now make use of the conservation law over here, you get the acceleration equation. This side over here is just the total derivative of the velocity field and that is given by the pressure gradient. So, that is the acceleration divided by rho and this. Now, in all this, there is uh, another way of uh, writing this using uh, identity, which makes this del i v square over 2 plus omega cross v is equal to minus del i p over rho plus f of i. So, you introduce the a new um, uh, chap, which is omega, which is curl of v. So, that is the vorticity of which has to do with the question of the fluid having a flow um, an, uh, around uh, um, a con closed contour C. So, this gamma, which is the line integral around a closed contour is what is called uh, circulation and uh, the circulation is there if the omega is there because you can relate this by Stokes theorem to integral omega dot d s the surface being a surface which has uh, c as a boundary curve and uh, <coughs> so if uh, all right so this part of uh, the flow has to do with the uh, ability of the fluid to um, uh, go round um, uh, in a, a closed uh, loop and that is this part of it. If there is no tendency of the fluid to circulate uh, to go round, we could set this happily uh, equal to 0. But in general, uh, it exists and vorticity does enter uh, the equation of motion, point of which gives you the um, uh, direction of the flow velocity, it is the exact analog of the line of force. And uh, so, the equations of motion uh, would be dx, uh, the equation of the straight line uh, of the streamline would be dx over vx equal to dy over vy equal to dz over vz. That is how you find the streamline, just the fact that the uh, tangent to this line gives you the uh, direction of the velocity. So, that is the uh, streamline. So, now you follow the um, uh, stream. If you now look at steady state. So, if you want to look at a steady state where del del t is equal to 0, then you notice that if I look at the component of this equation along the <coughs> uh, along a streamline, I dot it with a v um, and, uh, uh, this vector with a, a v vector, then um, this chap is going to drop out and, um, uh, but there is going to be some problem over here. So, now uh, you cannot um, uh, function. Therefore, on top of steady state, you want to invoke the isentropic condition. The isentropic condition makes del i over rho become equal to del i h, which is the enthalpy per unit mass. And then it is an, uh, v dot uh, gradient of h. And if this can be obtained from extra from a potential, so much the better. So, it is minus some uh, grad phi. So, this external force if writable as some uh, uh, gradient uh, of uh, phi, then along a straight line, you have v square over 2 plus h plus phi equal to constant along a streamline. That is the important thing. Along a streamline, a particular streamline, you have v square over 2 plus h plus phi a constant. It would be for all streamlines, there would be, this would be constant, but the value of the constant will vary from um, uh, streamline to streamline. So, isentropic 
makes um, uh, this al allows you to um, write, the, uh, uh, write it as v square over 2 plus h plus 5. So, for our ideal fluid, isentropy is built in. So, this is not a um, uh, uh, great loss. But it would be, one would be happier with pressure. One always sees these things written in terms of the pressure. So, you bring in the question of may incompressible. So, you assume incompressible. In that case, rho is equal to constant. And this becomes a minus gray. So, rho equal to constant can just set it equal to 1 if you want. Uh, the important or um, the thing is that this is just minus uh, gradient of pressure. And then this argument for which I had to invoke the relation that this whole thing is del i h in i, uh, I can relieve, uh, I can uh, get rid of the isentropic condition. This now has become a gradient in its own right and it is v square over 2 plus p over rho plus phi equal to constant along a streamline. So, that is for the in, um, uh, incompressible flow. If now you want to make a statement that this, now you make a, a much stronger statement, you say that it is a flow with omega equal to 0, no vorticity, what is called a irrotational, irrotational flow. So, omega equal to 0, curl of v is then equal to 0 and v is equal to gradient of phi and therefore, such flows are called potential flows. So, now you have flow with omega. If I have a flow with omega equal to 0, it is a irrotational flow and v is equal to grad phi. And now, you see when I come back to this relation over here, I have this um, uh, uh, happy situation where uh, it is del del t of gradient of del del t of phi plus gradient of v square over 2 is minus gradient of h if it is a compressible fluid and I want to uh, work with a compressible fluid, irrotational but compressible or happier situation minus gradient of p over rho if it is uh, uh, incompressible fluid and then plus or uh, minus gradient of phi. Uh, uh, phi. And then you see it is a, um, uh, th this is a gradient all over. So, you take it on this side and del phi del t plus v square over 2 plus h plus phi or del phi del t plus v square over 2 plus p over rho plus phi is equal to constant. So, constant over all space. Now, constant over all space. So, that is a big thing. Irrotational flow makes this quantity, if you, are, if you are talking about isentropic situation, then you have to worry about this. If you are going to talk about incompressible flow, then it is this and now it is a constant over all place, uh, all space. So, this is um, uh, it, that is the uh, way things stand, um, uh, are and there is, I mean, so what is Bernoulli's theorem? That is the, the uh, <coughs> something uh, which is uh, 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 generally written as the people happily write half v square plus this phi equal to constant and this general thing, uh, this uh, statement is known as Bernoulli's theorem. What you need to be aware of is that it is not that uh, simple at all. Uh, the, th this is one of the biggest misuses uh, of uh, hydrodynamics that the exact things are that um, uh, it's uh, if you are talking about 
a general fluid and you are talking about a steady state, then this quantity uh, for an isentropic situation is constant along a, a streamline. If you are talking about an incompressible fluid, uh, then it is going to be v square over 2 plus uh, p over rho plus phi, which is uh, constant along a streamline. Only if you are talking about a irrotational flow is this quantity p over rho plus half v square plus phi constant over all space in the situation where it is a incompressible steady state flow. If it is a non-steady, if it is a time dependent flow, you still have a Bernoulli's theorem and that is del phi del t plus v square over 2 plus p over rho plus phi is constant over all space uh, uh, <coughs> if it is an incompressible fluid and with the p over rho change to h if it is a. So, uh, the, it is only the potential flow which has this great advantage of giving you a combination which is constant over all space and therefore is tremendously usable. So, in any other form, uh, if you look at a orbit, it is only constant along a streamline and if you are going to use it, you better know the streamline. If I do not know the velocity field, I do not know the streamline. So, uh, it is not particularly useful, um, uh, uh, it is not particularly uh, easy to exploit Bernoulli uh, for an arbitrary flow. The situation where Bernoulli is generally exploited is tacitly saying that I have a potential flow, in which case there is this very strong statement that um, uh, the, uh, this kind of a quantity uh, in a steady state is conserved over um, uh, all space. So, that is the uh, now <coughs> uh, and uh, yesterday when we did the tutorial that is what essentially told us how to get the velocity uh, in case I have a fluid flowing round I have an obstacle a spherical obstacle over here and assuming that it is an um, uh, uh, irrotational flow, incompressible flow, because that is another incompressible irrotational flow tells you that incompressible is divergence v equal to 0, the two together tells you that del square phi equal to 0, that is incompressible potential flow del square phi equal to 0 and there is a tremendous um, uh, um, uh, 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 advantage of uh, uh, talking about these things, the advantage being that you can actually write down knowing your electrostatics, you can write down solutions of this phi over here and this uh, as you can see if rho is a constant, rho is a constant that is incompressible flow, it is divergence v equal to 0. So, that is basically um, uh, what uh, we have uh, talked about yesterday that uh, this is a summary of what the general uh, perfect fluid, no dissipation, what is it capable of, what are the different scenarios where, what is the general, what does the general equation look like, what are the different scenarios under which some statements can be made and in particular the so called Bernoulli theorem which is used um, uh, very often and um, uh, one has to be absolutely clear under what circumstances and in what way can Bernoulli's theorem uh, be um, uh, uh, exploited. So, uh, so, this is the point at which I mean if you ask for clarification of anything I mean th this is we would really need to uh, uh, be uh, quite happy with this uh, before uh, we uh, go along to uh, talk about the um, uh, uh, fluid with uh, viscosity which is what I want to um, uh, get on with after a couple of uh, comments. But uh, this is the basic material that we covered yesterday and uh, any query I mean any place where you are uncomfortable I would like to I mean address that. Yeah, go ahead. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Then also we can use uh, Bernoulli's theorem all over the space. 
Bernoulli's theorem tells you that um, omega has to be 0 everywhere, even if it starts out. So, you start it out with a uniform velocity. So, at uh, the, um, uh, this point over here, uh, it is uniform velocity. Therefore, by um, uh, uh, construction, uh, your um, uh, 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 curl is um, a 0. Question is, uh, I have not, uh, that is the comment that, I, that can I, if I ensure that it is curl equal to 0 by having the fluid flow in at constant velocity, am I sure that that flow will be um, uh, uh, circulation free everywhere and forever? That is the issue I will come to uh, in a moment. Huh? So, I mean, yeah, go ahead. No, the, see, uh, the point is that this um, uh, equation uh, here is essentially v dot, uh, v vector dot. Uh, plus gradient of v squared over 2 plus omega cross v is equal to, let me talk about uh, incompressible chap. So, it is del i p over rho uh, plus this minus a uh, uh, gradient of phi. Uh, so, minus grad p. So, now, I mean the point is that this is general, I do not have, I have omega. And therefore, so for number one, I drop this steady state, and now you have this equation, uh, which you say, so let's say that you write this as some equation where some n vector is equal to zero. So take these on this chap side, and the, and now I want to look at the component to make use of this in a scalar form. I want to look at it along a streamline. So I take the unit vector and dot it with n vector equal to 0. It is, so then I have it along the streamline. So, this dotting process gets rid of this term over here. Huh. So, that is why the statement is that the in a steady state, you have this quantity along a streamline, you have this conserved if it is a adiabatic flow and you have if it is an incompressible flow, uh, you have this conserved. So, that is the uh, statement. Yeah. So, um, uh, the, the, let me first deal with the, uh, 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 the two issues which I wanted to uh, deal with are circulation and incompressibility before I started talking about viscosity. And uh, so, since the circulation came up, let us uh, talk about circulation first. Yeah. Uh, huh, off. So, let us look at this um, uh, question of uh, circulation. So, I have a circulation along any closed contour which is V dot dl over C. So, this contour is actually made up of fluid particles. So, that is the uh, contour C, a contour made up of fluid particles and you get. So, now as time goes on, this chap will go here, this chap will go here, this uh, there is something, this goes somewhere and so on and that at the end of the day, uh, after a time, t, uh, uh, so after some time, the contour C will become a contour C prime. And uh, then I would have to integrate uh, uh, this circulation which I was talking about over here. I would now have to integrate uh, the corresponding V over that uh, contour C prime. Do I have the same number? So, you want to look at the total derivative of this gamma over here and that is going to be d v d t dot d l plus integral v dot d d t of this d l over here. 
So there would be two contributions. This one tells you what, what the, uh, how the contour changes, and this one cha uh, tells you how the velocity changes. Now, what is DVDT? DVDT, if it is isentropic, DVDT is minus grad enthalpy. So that's isentropic. No, so cooler is off. No, not the keys. Is that maybe the keys are causing the fluctuation? Yeah. Keys. Yeah. It's metallic. So yeah. Should have. So um, the uh, in why didn't it do so yesterday? Anyway. Uh, so and, and the uh, uh, DVDT is uh, minus grad H. And if it is isentropic, and so it is grad h dot dl over the closed contour, and therefore this is equal to zero. So now comes this chap. So if I want to look at this chap, then let me put the origin somewhere over here and look at this is my dl, and this is r, and this is let's say r prime. These are the two points of the con relative to some origin which I have somewhere. And uh, dl is clearly delta r. So this term over here is ddt of delta r, which is equal to delta of dr dt. And dr dt is the velocity, and so it is delta v. And so this term becomes over the cycle v dot delta v, and that's again equal to 0. So d gamma dt is, so gamma is conserved in a isentropic <coughs> motion under isentropic condition, gamma is conserved. So once you give a, so let's say at, uh, if you start out with um, uh, omega equal to 0, uh, it is always going to remain omega equal to 0. So there, there is this, um, uh, the, uh, achha, this is known as Kelvin's circulation theorem. Pardon, what? It's a closed circuit uh, integral, so delta of this is v delta of v square goes round the path over here. So you start. I mean, it's a perfect integral. So um, this is uh, Kelvin's circulation theorem that gamma is um, a constant in time for uh, um, uh, inviscid isentropic flow. So inviscid isentropic flow, uh, gamma is conserved. Now comes the uh, question then, uh, how strong is this? Now, how strong is this? That's where the uh, problem arises. The problem comes that imagine I have some kind of a body in the fluid. If I have some kind of a body in this fluid, and most of the cases that one has to work about, work, uh, uh, work on, are cases of bodies moving in fluid. Realistic problems come generally of a, in that form. And now you see, as this fluid flows, you cannot, cons uh, Kelvin's uh, constru uh, proof cannot be constructed. You cannot construct the uh, closed contour uh, uh, with the body in over there. So as soon as you have a body, placed in this um, uh, fluid over here, the this way in which we uh, went through this proof, that breaks down. And therefore, the whole idea of uh, uh, actually using Kelvin's circulation theorem as a um, uh, sort of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the usefulness 
is let's say severely restricted. So that's the um, uh, uh, point about uh, uh, this um, uh, business. So uh, to uh, come back um, uh, to your um, uh, question, that if I start it out so long as I did do not have uh, in uh, um, uh, uh, bodies, uh, uh, solid bodies inside the flow, then if I start out with omega equal to zero a uh, flow, that flow is certainly going to maintain omega equal to zero breaks down if you have a body. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that would have circulation around the edge of the uh, sphere, absolutely. So, uh, uh, all right, so that's Kelvin's circulation theorem. Um, uh, and uh, incidentally, the question of names, uh, um, uh, this uh, 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 equation in the form del vi del t plus vj del j v i as minus del i uh, p over uh, rho, that's Euler, and uh, all right, so I mean just that uh, one does talk about Euler's equation and it is, uh, and it's always been, uh, we'll add uh, viscosity uh, to it now, and um, the equation will become Navier-Stokes. And this has always seemed to me a bit of a uh, funny thing that uh, the, you, uh, without the viscosity you have Euler, and then the trace of Euler is disappears with the addition of viscosity. Uh, uh, says something or other about some kind of history, I guess. So uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, yeah. What's the question? Uh, don't even need to be moving, just a static body. The uh, uh, circulating paths around which I talked about are all fluid particles. So when this uh, particle trajectory moves and I have a body somewhere over here, then uh, after some time you cannot construct the uh, uh, contour anymore because a part of the contour will not be lying in the fluid anymore. Static fluid. If there is no motion, what's the point of talking about anything? I mean, static fluids are of no interest, right? I mean, it's a, well, what I'm saying is that just take the simplest case where you have a, a, a body sitting inside a, body held stationary in a static fluid, I'm already lost. If you want the body to move around in the fluid, the same statement holds. The, in the body, you cannot construct the loop of fluid particles. The whole idea of this proof, as you see, goes that the, I have this loop on which I can, all these loops are fluid particles and as time goes along, this loop changes as this will, and if there is so long as I have a whole mass of fluid, I don't have a problem. But then you put an obstacle in my path over here and this contour which was changing, changing, changing comes and hits this and now I don't, can't draw the contour anymore. That's the problem. Yeah. So, uh, 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 all right. So the next thing, uh, uh, what's this uh, incompressible fluid? And uh, is it a natural thing to uh, talk about uh, uh, incompressible fluids? So, uh, what um, uh, gives me? Uh, uh, let Let me just uh, 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 consider the uh, special uh, situation of um, uh, uh, these uh, potential flows. That will um, uh, give you a reasonable idea of um, uh, what's going on. So, let's say I have a potential flow, and v square over this is going to be a constant. So, let's say that uh, you have uh, 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 zero velocity, some v equal to zero somewhere, where the pressure is p0, and, uh, and uh, it's become uh, uh, v square at some other uh, point, and the pressure is this. 
then v square is p uh, minus p0 minus p over rho, so which is like delta um, uh, pressure uh, uh, divided by um, uh, this uh, rho um, uh, over here, there is um, uh, going to be, um, uh, let, let, let's imagine that it is some kind of a mean rho that I am talking about. So, it's, uh, uh, so v square is roughly given by this, which is delta p delta rho. So, let me have, uh, now I uh, bring in this delta rho over here divided by, so let's say this is some mean rho that I am talking about and delta rho over um, uh, rho mean. So, delta rho, this over here, it is at uh, everything under uh, isentropic conditions for this perfect fluid. So, this is nothing other than the velocity of sound. So, that is the velocity of sound and so, yeah, uh, so delta rho over rho is roughly v square over c s square. So, the mean, velo mean density uh, or the fluctuation in density is v square over c s square. So, a fluid is incom can be considered, so this quantity incompressible means that the fluctuation in density above the mean is much smaller than 1 and this would be much smaller than 1 so long as v square over c square is much smaller than 1. So, flows which take place at velocities much, much smaller than the sound speed can be considered uh, uh, more or less incompressible flows. So, incompressible flows are not such a bad idea low velocity flows, um, the, um, uh, they are uh, low velocity meaning small velocity compared to velocity of sound uh, is uh, qualifies as more or less uh, incompressible flow. So, good. So, incompressible flows are uh, not so bad. Completely circulation free flows are not so good. So, that is, uh, now why bring up uh, this issue about uh, 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 to uh, sort of be on your guard against misuse of this, but one particular uh, uh, thing that you, any uh, hydrodynamics treatment should convince you that there is such a thing as lift. Considering the fact that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you see um, uh, uh, questions of, uh, you see uh, examples of lift uh, uh, in um, daily life so many times, hydrodynamics should give you lift. So, uh, uh, lift, on the other hand, the contention, uh, what, uh, what I am going to say that potential flow. has no lift or drag. The proof is given in Landau Lifshitz, um, uh, but uh, the, the, it is somewhat long, so I uh, will uh, desist from it. But let me tell you why, because every hydrodynamics text has to uh, show you lift. So, um, uh, the, uh, w uh, how, how does it go? The standard statement would be that you take something which looks like this and then the argument is that here is, uh, so imagine that this is at rest and the fluid is flowing. So, the fluid comes in and then has to uh, uh, go round it and so it is sort of easier to go round than to go like this, uh, just comes from the shape of this body. So, from the shape of this body, uh, you argue that it is um, uh, uh, easier to go through the top. So, the streamlines would be sort of, uh, uh, there would be number of uh, uh, streamlines per unit area would be higher over here, the, the density of streamlines. So, you say that the density of streamlines higher over here, then over here 
where I mean you sort of uh, try to follow uh, this aerofoil and uh, problematic when it's shaped like so, uh, much easier when it is the top part of it. And so uh, the density of streamlines like the density of electric field lines gives the strength of the electric field, gives the strength of the velocity over here. So you argue that V top is greater than V bottom. So that's step number one. And then you say that P top plus V top square by 2 is equal to P bottom plus V bottom square by 2. I mean, that, that, that's the statement. Now, what, look at it, it would, I mean, this statement can only be made uh, if it is constant everywhere. So, it's an irrotational flow then, if it is constant everywhere. And then it is certainly true. And then you can get uh, <coughs> p bottom minus p top is an, uh, equal to v top uh, minus v bottom and, and, uh, into uh, v top plus v bottom uh, divided uh, by 2. And uh, if that is a sort of um, uh, uh, so, uh, p bottom minus p top is given by this, and that is uh, approximately so that is um, uh, approximately p bottom, uh, yeah, p bottom minus p top is roughly v mean uh, into v top minus v bottom, that is, um, uh, there is a density to be thrown in somewhere, uh, here it is. Huh? So, uh, uh, that is that. So, this is the, um, uh, uh, now to get the total force, total force, total force per unit span. So, total force per uh, unit span, you have to integrate along this contour over here. And so, that is going to be equal to uh, V bar and this integral V top minus. So, take out this V bottom integrated from 0 to if this length is C, which is the usual notation, uh, the chord of the um, uh, aerofoil, then it is 0 to C um, uh, V top minus V bottom. But 0 to C V top minus V bottom is uh, integrated uh, over uh, dx. That is interesting because this is going to, so you go from uh, uh, here to here. So that is an, uh, an, an V rho minus V rho v bottom uh, rho times dx 0 to c plus 0 to c uh, uh, v uh, uh, rho, uh, uh, there is average v, sorry, there is the mean v, there is the v bottom, uh, mean v, there is the v bottom, this is equal to minus v average, v bottom rho, and there is plus rho and there is a v top and dx. Yeah? So, that is that. So, then this is from uh, here to here. Reverse the sign over here, it is minus and then from c to 0 and then what you have is just the circulation along this way. So, this force per is equal to minus rho v times the circulation gamma because this is 0 to c going with v bottom and coming back from c to 0 following v top and therefore, uh, what you have over here is just the circulation of this flow, giving you the standard uh, result, uh, which um, uh, is somebody's theorem or other, which is that the total force per uh, unit span of the wing is minus rho mean v, sorry, mean velocity uh, times the circulation uh, of the velocity. But then, you see the important point that it is the circulation which determines the lift. So, if the circulation determines the lift, 
then it is not a, an uh, an, uh, uh, irrotational flow and therefore, this cannot be constant over um, uh, uh, all space. So, then where is this a constant? Then you have to the, uh, say, aha, uh -huh, if not constant, then uh, constant over uh, what? Constant, then you say, aha, uh -huh, if this is a, a rotational flow constant over a, a streamline, and then which streamline, and you can go and back and forth and argue. So, this is the, here is a result which is a standard result in um, uh, the lift uh, literature. And there, every hydrodynamics text has the temptation to derive this for you uh, in one paragraph, and that is where that is where you have to be a little wary of these arguments that about uh, Bernoulli's theorem. So it is very important to know that it is. Bernoulli's theorem uh, in the form that this is over constant over all space is true only for the irrotational flow. So, if I am using it and getting an answer for the lift which is proportional to the circulation, I have a problem. If I have to use it for a flow with circulation, then you have to ask the question which streamline are you going to follow? If I know which streamline I am going to follow, then I have actually solved the problem. I have found the velocity field and I uh, uh, know what I am uh, supposed to do. So, this is where I mean the text that uh, one of the texts that I recommended, which is where uh, Triton, uh, this is the Triton argument for it, uh, for getting uh, this formula about the lift, and that is not, I mean. It is tempting to show it uh, that uh, it is any lift, uh, uh, showing lift in a hydrodynamics text is a must, but then uh, this is not, uh, you, what you have to watch out for is that there is problem with this kind of argument. So, where does the lift come from? Lift comes only when you include viscosity. There is the, the role of the potential flow has to be mixed with the question of a wake and, uh, in the body and uh, awake in the flow behind the body and only then uh, you can get uh, the, um, uh, uh, so uh, it is on, uh, I would certainly like to demonstrate that which is uh, Landau Lifshitz demonstration of um, uh, the lift uh, uh, as uh, example of flows. Yeah. Uh, but it just said that it, uh, there is a uh, solid in the flow. Uh, huh. Uh -huh, yeah, so my point is that uh, all right, this would not uh, be a very good thing for saying that uh, it is, uh, uh, you should not be saying that it is a potential flow. But then if I tell you that, then if you tell me that this is going to be constant over all space, then it is a potential flow statement. But I can say that all stream, when the stream started, uh -huh. No, not at all. Who said that? I mean, uh, Kelvin's theorem fails over here. So, what's the where, no, who guarantees me that what I had at infinity is going to be the same over here? Not inside the body. Not uh, out, just outside the body. I mean, these the stagnation points that you would get in this flow over here would kill you. So, I mean, the flow without any viscosity, this line which comes, flow line which comes like this and hits this point is a stagnation point of the flow, and you are killed uh, so far as Kelvin's theorem goes. Yeah, we did find the pressure using Bernoulli's theorem, and that pressure, if you work out, will give you no dra drag and no lift. That is the point, exactly. That we did find that pressure, and that pressure is, uh, is incapable of giving you uh, drag or lift. The point is here, I am interested in talking about the lift. Yesterday, I was not interested in, I, I said that if it is a potential flow, let me go ahead and find the pressure. I certainly can do it. Huh? 
and that is consistent if you integrate that pressure over the surface of that sphere you would find there is no lift there is no drag so there is no uh, uh, nothing inconsistent over there inconsistency comes if I want to take that and force a situation where I want to show demonstrate lift to you this is where the uh, problem is if I want to demonstrate lift I have to have that boundary, I have to have that wake behind the um, uh, body uh, where the uh, Kel where Kelvin's uh, theorem has to break down. So, uh, 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 so uh, the, the corollary uh, to this is that if you ever want to, I mean, get the right things, I mean, absolutely, uh, honestly stated and done, there is no better, better place than Landau lift sheds. It's pr difficult simply because there are very few shortcuts um, uh, available. And so, uh, 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 if you, in, initially, uh, it doesn't, uh, it sort of uh, is a problematic uh, book to uh, go through, but then, once you get a feel for it, uh, I can guarantee that this is, uh, you wouldn't find a single statement which is made in uh, uh, non-seriously. So that's a, a very strong uh, feature of the Landau text anyway. So, uh, all right. So uh, uh, the, um, mm, so now I want to uh, get going with this. So let's look at uh, it's the viscosity. So I want to uh, uh, add this question of um, uh, what is uh, 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 friction between uh, the fluid layers. So I have this fluid flowing over here. And let's say I have a velocity. This is, let's say, the x direction. X, this is the x, y axis. So here is x and y. And let's say that the fluid uh, velocity is uh, u in this direction, which is u0, y over uh, u0, y over a. So I have a flow velocity, which I can easily imagine can happen if I have a plate over here. And let's say I have a plate over here at distance um, uh, a, a of a. And this is the x direction. And this is the y direction. You have a plate over here, and you have a plate over here. And you make the top plate uh, slide. So you make the top plate slide. This fluid will have to move. And uh, it will move roughly uh, with a profile um, uh, like this. Now the point is that uh, uh, the, um, uh, if we want to maintain this kind of a gradient, that is, a fluid, the velocity over here is like so, over here, this, like this, like this, and on it goes. So you have this increasing velocity. This is something that the fluid inherently does not like. So the fluid will try to equalize the velocities of different layers. So that's the property, that's the inherent property of the fluid, that it does not like this gradient over here. The, uh, so the top layer would try to speed up this, and this would, uh, uh, so looked at from the point of view of this, this, the bottom layer, will try to uh, slow it down. So there is going to be internal forces between the um, uh, 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 different layers of the fluid, and the slowly moving layers would tend to slow down the fast moving layers, and that is the friction between, just as the friction between uh, two solid bodies, that you 
it, it, it doesn't want to slide on top of uh, another. So this chap doesn't want to slide, and similarly, this fluid layer does not want to slide um, uh, uh, above the uh, 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 lower fluid layer. So it is the it is like a friction that the same kind of friction that you see over here, sliding motion is not. Um, uh, 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 naturally uh, sustained, there would be opposition to it, and there is opposition over here. That opposition obviously has to be proportional to the gradient of V. So, the, the uh, um, uh, resistive forces, the resistive forces then has to be uh, proportional um, uh, to the gradient of V, and that is the thing which we need to um, uh, uh, bring in. Uh, you have to bring in phenomenologically, so I have to write down some expression uh, for it. So, how do I do it? So, what is, I mean that is what would be the way of uh, uh, doing this uh, phenomenology. So, you look at this uh, once again. You write this as ddt of rho vi, that is the rate of change of momentum minus, you see it can be written as del del x j rho vi vj plus p delta i j. So, this is del del t of minus and, and this I could call some tensor t i j and del del t of rho v i is the divergence of this tensor T i j over here. So, what is happening? What this tells you that if I have a, a volume, uh, 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 then the volume uh, momentum in this volume over here, the amount of momentum that I would be losing per unit time would be but this uh, uh, the volume integration over here by Gauss's theorem would become a surface uh, integration, and it would be the flux flux of T i j across the surface. Pardon? The pressure. Oh, oh uh, yeah, right. So, um, uh, the uh, uh, flux of T i j across the surface tells you what is the ra uh, rate at which momentum is depleting or increasing uh, inside this volume over here. So far, one, uh, what we have is uh, um, uh, 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 a, f a flux which is completely uh, reversible and um, uh, we uh, do not have any uh, dissipation uh, with uh, the flux which you uh, see over here. The dissipation flux, so what I need to add into this T i j is a part which is going to depend upon the velocity gradient and it is the uh, dependence on the, so velocity gradient, so what can I do? I can talk about adding uh, uh, writing uh, T i j in terms of the, uh, as uh, 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 in a low gradient situation, this is going to be some A, uh, let us take the symmetric combination. The symmetric combination, because uh, uh, if you were to have this fluid just simply rotate as a body, uh, there should be no dissipation. So, that is ensured by having the uh, symmetric uh, combination over here. And then uh, it is isotropic, so there could uh, uh, the constants can only be scalars over here. So, I have to form um, uh, uh, with the gradients, I have to declare the te uh, tensor. And so, uh, it is going to be A times this plus there could be uh, another chap which looks like um, uh, B uh, times del V L uh, del L and some delta J. 
So there is, uh, an, uh, uh, there is one term which is uh, of this kind where A and B are constants and the other uh, which looks like this. Generally, one uh, uh, redefines this in uh, the constants A and B uh, to write this as uh, eta. Uh, uh, so, all right, I would like uh, an uh, eta minus two by three. Um, so, let's see. And I want to get a part of it into uh, just want the A and B to be written in a, a form which is all right. So, this is eta into del v i del x j plus del v j del x i minus two thirds minus two thirds uh, delta i j del v i uh, del v l del x l plus um, uh, it is uh, zeta times del V L del X L delta I J. So that's the um, uh, general. Um, uh, that, that that's just a recast in terms of uh, A and B in terms of eta and um, uh, this uh, zeta, which is uh, now. Uh, uh, what all, so, this is the uh, dissipative part of the uh, stress tensor, which is proportional to uh, the gradient of the, the first power of the gradient. So, there is this assumption of this is valid only for uh, low gradients of the uh, velocity. So, uh, something which is of um, uh, this nature with A's and B's constants, this is a fluid which is t uh, called a Newtonian um, uh, fluid. And if you are looking at uh, 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 liquid crystals or things like that, which also have a, a flow and a hydrodynamic description, then the dissipative part of the uh, stress tensor uh, would have to be uh, modified according to the uh, correct phenomenology. So, yeah. Because uh, the, there is uh, an, uh, this divergence which I would have to uh, worry about here. This is going to talk, there are two different kinds of stresses. One which has to do with the kind of flow yeah, that we were talking about where the velocity varies in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of the flow. So that is taken care of by these uh, uh, delta v i de, del x j plus del. So, these are catering to the situation where you are your um, uh, uh, flow, uh, the gradient is in the direction different from the flow. The other is purely a gradient which is uh, in the uh, direction of the flow. It is del v l del x l. So, the gradient, this has to do with the gradient in the direction of the, so gradient of v x along x, v x, v y along y, v z along z. So, that is this part over here. The, this part over here is primarily catering to the uh, 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 part which is, uh, 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 it is not that it is completely catering to that, but it is primarily why this is totally absent about what happens when you have a shear and uh, there is a um, uh, uh, this um, uh, velocity gradient which exists in the perpendicular to the direction of the flow that is the shear um, uh, viscosity. So, accordingly this part over here has this uh, eta is the shear velocity uh, shear viscosity and the uh, eta uh, or the zeta over here is the so called bulk viscosity, which is responding to the fact that the velocity gradient may be in the direction of the flow. So, that is a, a rewrite um, uh, of this. 
and thereafter, so you just put it in uh, this TIJ dissipative and work your um, uh, way through. And uh, if you do work your way through this, you would be coming up with eta del square vi plus zeta plus eta over 3 gradient of derivatives. So uh, here it is. So uh, all that you need to do is put this uh, T dissipative in over um, uh, here, uh, that's T i j in addition to this part over here, add this part over, uh, add this part that I have written down and you will find that the answer is eta uh, del square v i plus this. So that's it. That's what is known as, uh, well, that is uh, not Navier-Stokes equation really. A uh, special part of it is uh, Navier-Stokes equation. So if I were to talk about incompressible fluids, so incompressible fluid, then divergence V is equal to 0, and you have del Vi del T plus Vj del J Vi is equal to minus del I P over rho plus eta over rho del square Vi. So that's the, that is what is called Navier-Stokes equation. Navier-Stokes equation is When you take uh, uh, the general uh, structure over here, which includes compressible flows, and then make the incompressibility condition uh, uh, constant, and you end up with this over here. So that's, um, uh, that, that, that's um, uh, where you are. And now, well, you have to uh, uh, show that eta is greater than 0. If I really, if I have put in a dissipative mechanism, as I have said I have, then eta, uh, 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 the dissipative mechanism would be operative only if eta uh, is greater than zero. So let's go through a quick proof of why this should be so. So uh, eta uh, 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 has to be, so I need to look at the total energy, which is vi square uh, uh, integral rho vi square d3r. So why did that data disappear? What, what disappeared? Because divergence v is taken to be equal to 0, incompressible fluid. So, uh, so I want to look at uh, this uh, total energy and uh, the del del t of this quantity over here. So here is the total kinetic energy of this fluid and uh, in a volume V and you want to look at uh, what its del del t is and uh, what you are uh, going to get. I'm not going to write this row actually, I'm just going to set it equal to 1 just a lot of writing for nothing. So this is minus integral uh, vi vj del j vi d3r minus vi del ip d3r plus nu V i del square V i d 3 r. So that's the uh, energy uh, balance. So that's the uh, en uh, energy balance over here. I have simply multiplied this equation. Rho is constant. I have set it equal to 1. And I have multiplied by um, uh, uh, V i. So that gives me del del t of uh, V i square over 2 and uh, integrated over the space in which I'm interested. And so this is the total energy. So I'm looking at del E kinetic, 
del t and what is the answer? Well, look at this term first v i del i p is del i p v minus p uh, 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 is del i p v i minus p del i v i incompressible fluid that goes. So, this is del p i. So, it is a divergence. So, v i del i p is a divergence. Therefore, this term v i del i p d 3 r is the divergence of p v uh, <coughs> is a uh, di divergence over the uh, volume uh, d 3 r which is equal to p v dot d s a surface integral. Now, comes the question of uh, boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are uh, now that v is equal to 0 on all static surfaces. So, that is just an outcome that is a phenomenological statement. If I have a static surface, then the force of attractions between the um, uh, molecules of the surface and the liquid molecules, the lowest layer that is the layer which is just hugging the uh, fluid has to be at rest. So, V equal to uh, 0 on all static surfaces. So, that is the boundary condition for a viscous liquid. So, V equal to 0. So, if I have a finite uh, bounding surface, so there and uh, V equal to 0. If it is infinitely far away, then all natural solutions would decay at infinity. So, either way, this is equal to 0. So, out goes this term over here. Well, what about this chap over here? That is an exercise to show that this also can be written as a divergence, divergence of something if divergence of V is equal to 0. So, that is the uh, uh, thing which uh, uh, you can um, uh, work out um, uh, for yourself. It is uh, sort of obvious that it is going to become del j v square v j. Pardon? Which one? Divergence v equal to 0? I am talking about an incompressible fluid. See, uh, this whole business is for an incompressible fluid. So, divergence v equal to 0 everywhere. From, uh, from the boundary condition, this is uh, why this is equal to 0. Ah, because this is only on the surface. So, if I have a static surface, I am assuming that the bounding surface is static and therefore, v equal to 0 on the surface and therefore, it is equal to 0. So, that is yeah. Or if you do not have a surface, then it is at infinity and at infinity, the velocity has fallen off faster than the uh, 1 over r square and therefore, So, uh, what this should become, what you should be able to um, uh, show uh, that uh, this is also writable as the divergence. Divergence of what? Obviously, there is just one candidate in this. It is um, uh, v square uh, over 2 times uh, uh, v j. So, do that little bit of algebra which will write that as a divergence. Once it is a divergence, it becomes a surface integral. On the surface, the v's vanish equal to 0. So, out go uh, these two terms over here. So, uh, two terms gone and then it is to, uh, uh, left to the viscous term uh, to uh, 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 see what, uh, where we go. So, it is uh, del del t. So, now the del E del t has become nu times v i del square v i d 3 r. Here, the trick would be uh, to do an integration by parts. So, you do an integration by parts on the surface 
the on the boundaries the velocity vanishes. So, the first term in the integration by parts goes away, the, uh, the del square becomes a grad and, uh, when you uh, integrate once and then there is grad and when you differentiate this that is another grad and therefore, uh, this is minus and the minus sign to boot and therefore, it is del v i del x j del v i del x j d 3 r. So, that and <coughs> which is uh, uh, writing out uh, this uh, that, so that the uh, summation uh, uh, convention becomes clear. Uh, you have terms over here for the same j, I have to sum over the i's and for the same i, I have to sum over the j's. That is the reason why I have uh, written this. But then this is a positive definite. So, this part over here is positive definite. You want it to be a dissipative system and therefore, for this to be a dissipative system, the shear viscosity has to be greater than zero. So, nu uh, eta, uh, nu is eta over rho, that is called the kinematic viscosity, eta uh, is the shear viscosity, yeah. How did the term? Uh, the, I did the integration by parts of this by uh, on this one over here. So, uh, uh, look at this. Suppose I have V dV dx and I am integrating by parts. The answer uh, would be V. Uh, and then v uh, between the boundaries minus integral uh, sorry v v prime uh, uh, between the boundaries and then it is del v del x whole square dx so this goes to zero and that remains hmm. So, except that I have a lot of uh, 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 v's and lot of x's, uh, the components to worry about and that happens for each one of them and that is the uh, result. So, if I want it to be dissipative, nu has to be greater than 0. The lambda, uh, the zeta which we talked about which is called the bulk viscosity also has to be uh, greater than 0 but there is no way you can prove it uh, using staying within the confines of what uh, we are um, uh, at uh, uh, present uh, confined to that is talking about only the uh, momentum uh, flux and uh, mass flux until and unless I start talking about the energy flux, I would not be able to demonstrate uh, that the uh, bulk viscosity has for dissipative, uh, uh, say for uh, dissipation to take place, the bulk viscosity also has to be uh, greater than 0. I need the energy flux for that. We have, we are probably not going to deal with it uh, at all. Um, uh, in the next couple of days, but if you look up um, uh, the uh, uh, Landau Lifshitz, you will find the proof. Uh, this comes in the second chapter, uh, but the proof for the other uh, comes way after in somewhere in the later uh, heat conduction uh, situations. So, uh, but the point is that both, I mean, for dissipation, your zeta 2 has to be uh, greater than 0. Proving this is uh, uh, technically, uh, well, uh, not technically motivated, but you require the energy flux uh, to be able to say that. Uh, write down the flux of the energy and then look at the conservation laws for uh, total energy. And But with the kinetic energy, we can, uh, if this is to be a dissipative process, nu has to be greater than zero. So, that is the that is a general statement where to which we will come back and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, when we start talking about uh, turbulence in a fluid, uh, we will uh, have to uh, uh, remember this because uh, that is a result that we will need. So, all right, here we are, uh, it is almost 
closing time. So I'll start something to, for you to um, uh, uh, get uh, sort of uh, accustomed to, and then we'll carry it through uh, tomorrow. So what do I want to do? I want to demonstrate at least, I mean, go through all the uh, non-standard steps and leave integrations to you. I want, there, there is, I mean, everybody has been talking about this answer 6 pi eta rb. That is, if I have a, fluid, a sphere of radius r, uh, moving with a velocity v in a fluid, then the statement is that there is a drag force which is minus 6 pi eta r. And just as you expect the friction to be opposed against the velocity, and the answer is minus 6 for a spherical geometry. Question is, how do I, how, how does one arrive at a uh, answer coming uh, that uh, considering the fact that what I have at my uh, disposal is a statement that uh, and, uh, this del del T, that's rho V i, is minus del del x i, uh, x j of T i j, and T i j has the form P, sorry, uh, if written in this form, I need a, or write it like this as I did before, minus P delta i j minus rho V i V j plus uh, uh, what we have, it's all eta del V i del x j plus del j. Incompressible fluid, so incom all from now on it will be except when I do the speed of sound, it is all going to be incompressible fluid, rho equal to constant, divergence v equal to zero. All right. So, uh, and, and, and that's uh, uh, Tij uh, equal to this, that's del del xj, that's my uh, 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 rho is a constant, and that's my uh, equation of motion. And now I have to um, uh, get some result for you, which talks about the grad, drag force as minus 6 pi eta r. So, what, so the first thing I, you need to know the, uh, the velocity field. So, you have this sphere. So I have this sphere which is moving with a uniform velocity v inside this viscous fluid. So I want to transform, I want to change this to a static fluid, a static um, uh, uh, sphere. So it's a static sphere and the fluid far away has a velocity. Uh, which is um, uh, minus v. So, so I change it to a problem um, where the fluid, the sphere is at rest, and far away from the uh, uh, sphere, the fluid is flowing uh, with a velocity um, minus v. So now, uh, what um, uh, are the uh, uh, what's the ammunition uh, that I have? Now, this and under what circumstances are results of this type valid? So, what am I supposed to? I'm supposed to get the v, and what am I supposed to solve? I'm supposed to solve Navier-Stokes equation, which I wrote down a minute ago. Del V i del T 
plus V j del j V i is minus del i P over rho plus nu del square V i. So, uh, number one approximation or assumption steady state. So, del del t equal to 0. Number two, low velocities. This term is quadratic in the velocities. It is a nonlinear term in this uh, differential equation. So, this is going to be low velocities so that v square is much smaller than v uh, times some scale v naught. So, uh, uh, the uh, velocities are small enough that I want to drop the v square term over here. So, that is the second statement. And then I am supposed to solve for del square v i is equal to uh, nu times del square v i is uh, del square v vector is gradient of pressure divided by rho. So, eta over here and get rid of this. So, eta del square v is in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 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 del square v is equal to uh, gradient of p that is the uh, 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 thing which uh, you need to uh, worry about. But then what do I know? So, this is what I have to solve. Now, how do I get, uh, uh, solve it? The first thing I note, I mean obviously, uh, 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 the pressure has to be eliminated. I, uh, uh, you can deal with only one variable at a time. So, it is only um, uh, v that I am going to concentrate on and try to find a solution for that. So, it is um, uh, your, um, uh, uh, so how do I eliminate the pressure? Take a curl. So, del square curl of v is equal to 0. So, del square curl of v is equal to 0. Now, uh, all right, I mean, let me uh, this v and u all uh, that is a bad notation. So, let me have the sphere moving with a uniform velocity v and it is u uh, at the far end of the fluid. So, u is the velocity of the fluid. So, let me write down v prime as v. Uh, plus u. So, let the fluid velocity uh, now from v I change to v plus u, so that v prime has the value the, in terms of this velocity v prime it decays at uh, the uh, boundaries. So, far away so v prime, so v prime is equal to 0 far away from the sphere. So, it is uh, more convenient for me uh, to work with um, uh, all right, but now uh, uh, v uh, if I substitute in the so far the velocity of the fluid del square curl v is equal to 0, but now v prime will follow this is mind you a constant vector. This is a constant vector over here. So, it is del square curl of v prime is also equal to 0, but now there is the divergence free condition which says that divergence of v is equal to 0. So, if divergence of v is equal to 0 and u is a constant vector then divergence of v prime is also equal to 0. So, uh, so divergence of v prime is equal to 0. So, you know what that v prime can be written as the curl of a. 
because it is an incompressible fluid for which divergence of V is equal to 0. So, if I take the divergence of V prime, then it is divergence of V which is 0. This is a constant vector whose divergence is 0. So, divergence of V prime is equal to 0. So, V prime is equal to curl of A. So, V the real velocity of the fluid which I am after is curl of A minus u. So, that is what I know about the velocity. So, it's, uh, uh, it reduces to finding this A. So, what can I say about A? V is a polar vector. If I have a polar vector and take a curl, it becomes an axial vector. Therefore, A has to be an axial vector. So, A has to be an axial vector. Axial vectors, all right. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, at this point, it is an axial vector. Number 2, V can A and, and, and uh, so A can only linearly de uh, depend on A, A only um, A, A, A V depends only linearly on U and therefore, a can depend only linearly on you. So, the uh, vector now uh, uh, A has to have a linear dependence on you. It is an axial vector. It is an axial vector and what can A be composed of? A can, has to be formed from radius vector and u. Those are the only two vectors that are available to you. So, out of the radius vector, radius vector with the origin at the center of the sphere, you have this radius vector r and, uh, and uh, the other vector which is available to you is um, uh, uh, the uh, velocity vector u. So, A has to have the, so the structure of A is immediately fixed. A is going to be the vectorial part of it has to be n the unit vector cross u and then with the along with this there has to be some function of just the uh, 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 the magnitude of the uh, uh, vector uh, magnitude r of this vector. So, some function of the scalar r times n cross u that has to be the structure of A. It is more convenient for me to write um, uh, this as f prime, that is the derivative of f, how, how does it matter? I mean, um, uh, 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 but uh, uh, f or f prime, I mean f is not known. So, uh, so it is something which is a derivative, I have written shifted next to uh, velocity uh, variable of v prime, uh, which uh, vanishes at infinity. It is always uh, easier to work with things which vanish at infinity. And so, uh, I choose to work with this combination V prime. V prime has a curl, uh, 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 V prime has its uh, divergence uh, equal to 0, just because the uh, u is a constant vector. Also, the velo uh, equation which V satisfies is also satisfied by this V prime over here. So, I have del square curl of V prime equal to 0 and V prime because it is divergence free is to be obtained as uh, can be written as curl of A. 
So, v prime written as curl of a now has the um, uh, feature that it has to be a polar vector and therefore, a has to be an axial vector. So, if a is to be an axial vector and the only two vectors available to you to construct this axial vector r and the radius vector r and the given velocity vector u, the only thing you can do is write a cross product because you also have the constraint that A cannot be anything other than linear, can have no dependence on U, uh, which is uh, of higher power than unity. The, uh, you are solving now a completely linear problem, higher powers of U are not uh, going to emerge as an answer. So, you can, uh, the only option for this A vector left to you is to write N cross U and then have a, 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 a coefficient which depends upon the distance arbitrary function and so you write this as f prime r so that you can write this as grad f cross u. So, f is the unknown scalar function which you have to calculate. Tremendous reduction. You wanted, you started out with a velocity vector, a vector to be calculated and this and that and at the end of the day this, these few steps over here have reduced it uh, at least psychologically to a trivial problem, because all that you now do is need to solve for this f, which is a function of the radial distance alone. You uh, uh, are not going to be worried about angular dependences of the del square operator, because all the angular dependence has been taken care of this argument about axial vectors and polar vectors. And this is the uh, uh, structure at the end of the day with f going to and now, what I will need to, when I start tomorrow, what I need to do is put that uh, uh, condition on first, I write that as uh, what happens when I write V prime equal to curl of A. What happens if I take a curl of uh, this equation, uh, curl of that quantity, U is a constant vector. So, whenever you start taking derivatives, it uh, gives out. So, uh, uh, taking curls, taking this and that become rather easy. So, uh, uh, we are going to take the curl and get a V prime and then I am going to put that um, uh, uh, over here and will emerge with a function uh, equation for F prime, uh, F which would be trivially solvable. So, this is the reduction of this problem, which uh, in, uh, is uh, the uh, uh, landau lifshitz special that makes it doable uh, in a class. So, uh, uh, the, you could have taken, obviously, there is the other way of doing this. That is del square curl of V equal to 0, V is equal to curl of A. You go ahead and write del square curl of curl of A equal to 0, get an equation for um, uh, A uh, which has a double Laplacian. Now, do uh, expansion in terms of uh, uh, the usual um, uh, 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 and, 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 uh, and Legendre polynomials and uh, so on and so forth, and uh, you are, uh, which is the uh, standard way of doing it, but costs you several pages of algebra, whereas you short circuit um, and everything uh, over here through the argument about axial and polar vectors and reduce it to a problem which so far as the solution of the differential equation goes is just absolutely trivial. So, uh, this is something which uh, is uh, worth uh, demonstrating. Uh, the drag force which is this can so uh, uh, be quite uh, trivially uh, obtained. There would be some algebra for you to do, I mean uh, taking derivatives and integrating over the sphere. But that is uh, uh, really uh, not the uh, uh, problem. The problem is that I need to know what the uh, velocity field is and the velocity field is very easily. So, anyway, uh, 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 this is the uh, point. Uh, uh, look at it and go over the arguments that we have gone through and whatever uh, is, the, uh, is problematic uh, will uh, take it. If uh, there is a time in the evening, we will do it then. If not, we will do it tomorrow. So, great.